Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful day, what a wonderful day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. You have rejoiced and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Lobby, Thompson Lobby, God bless you. Bronxy, God bless you. Naomi, God bless all of you. This is the day the Lord has made and you have to rejoice and be glad in it. And I hope you are doing that. All right. This is the day the Lord has made. What a wonderful day that he has made for you and I to rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer, okay? Our Heavenly Father, indeed we are grateful to you that this is the day you have made for us to rejoice and be glad. Understanding the finished work of Jesus Christ, for which we have our liberty, our freedom, bringing us to this dispensation of grace and um, in our and having our liberty in that which he did for us which we couldn't do for ourselves we are grateful 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 we thank you father many thanks for this month oh this is the last day of the month hallelujah we thank you we thank you oh god for this month and we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name we thank you lord in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Beloved, it's been an exciting time to be alive and uh, to know that God has chosen you to be among the living and not the dead. And so he has, he has his plans that he has for you. Uh, it's, it's not over yet. It's not over yet until it's over. Are you listening? So we thank him, all right? You want to just thank God. You just want to thank him. Thank him for all that he has done. Thank him for what he's doing. And thank him for what he will do. Amen. What a wonderful God. What a beautiful God. What a beautiful God. What a wonderful God. What a caring God. What a blessed God we serve. He's a good God. He created us in his image and in his likeness for such a wonderful time as this. I, we give God all the glory and all the praise. Uh, Romans chapter 1, let me read something that Paul says that, that Jesus Christ called um, um, to be an apostle separated to the gospel of God. God is called us to be separated for the gospel, which he promised before through his prophets, in the holy scriptures all right this one of the promises god gave and uh, that we are separated we are separated why he separated us for his good works for his good works 
and beloved it's so exciting to know that god god bless you woman of god god bless you woman of god god bless you god bless you it's good to know that god has separated us i mean delivered us from um, the 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 bondage of the law which we couldn't keep and uh, brought us into this dispensation of grace it's such a wonderful it's amazing it's amazing it's wonderful i mean to to know that you have your liberty in god my goodness hey nana Bwachi. nana god bless you i'm looking at you with your your african cloth on on your you are indeed and nana god bless you god bless you amen this is great now it's so good to know that that we have been delivered or brought from the old law the law we couldn't keep a law all right the law that we could not keep into this dispensation of grace and um, we are so grateful to God for sending Jesus Christ to that <clears throat> to to do that for us to come and sacrifice his blood for the remission of our sins now the reason why Jesus have to share his blood because the covenant God made Beloved, when it comes to covenant, it's it's a serious business. And so that is why, you know, um, uh, it's, e it's not an easy thing to do. You know, it's so easy to say, oh, uh, this is my friend, or, or that is my friend. Well, that's why it's easy for that friendship to be broken. But covenant is a serious business. You don't, you just don't break it until death. All right? So you want to you want to have you want to make covenant you want to have covenant all right and you want to have covenant with people instead of just other than that they they are just um hey Damon Fisher God bless you man of God um and so this is this is something that God did with us he made a covenant with us all right and um, he gave us laws that governs us but we couldn't we could not okay we've been I've been teaching that for the past month or so that this is the better covenant as a, as the scripture will, will say it this is the better covenant does it doesn't mean that that old covenant that old law or that old testament wasn't good all right it was good it only brought us that picture to see our sinfulness all right and to know that we couldn't keep we couldn't keep um, that covenant we, there was no way we could keep that we couldn't do it all right and remember that the covenant was such that what what you did what you do all right allows God to release his blessing what you couldn't do also releases the curse <laughs> are you listening yesterday I was sharing with you in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 all right you see the covenant I mean the seriousness the, the heart of the covenant that God made with us that it was almost imp it was impossible and and if you want to even just take you know there were so many commandments in the in it um, over 500 or so uh, just take the Ten Commandments alone the Ten Commandments alone I mean do you think you could keep the Ten Commandments how many people do you think could do that and so thanks be to 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 God for sending Jesus and Jesus said in Matthew 5 17 that he didn't come all right to abolish that old law he came to fulfill it for you and me because we couldn't do it we couldn't do it I mean it right now and this is why I want to please this is why I want to take your mind all right or move you your attention from from living your life now as though you are in that old covenant you are not in that old covenant stop living your life as as though you are in the old covenant trying everything so hard you know you're doing everything so hard to to get approval of god beloved you just cannot take the ten commandments alone see if you can obey it see how far you can go with it and remember remember the covenant is or such that god bless you. hey i'm i'm a yell god bless you the set is such that if you break one according to James 2 if you break one of the covenant you have broken all because the covenant was such that you are supposed to fulfill all the covenant all when you fulfill all all these blessings the Bible says will come upon you 
Now, if you break one, all these curses will come upon you. Now, beloved, how do you think you'll be able to handle the things of God? How do you think you can survive in this? And so we thank God for sending Jesus. All right. And Jesus says, he reminded us that he didn't come to abolish that old covenant because he is the only divine person who could fulfill it. And so he did it and brought you and I into this better covenant. And in this better covenant, okay, it's what Jesus has already done. It's what he has done. Now, you I'm talking to right now, when Jesus was walking on the face of this earth, you and I were not there. We were not born. All right. But look at this. Look at this. Since God is a God of generations and God, I mean, he thinks far. far. Look at what he did for us. He, what, did he, what he did for us is that Jesus died and shed the blood for all of us. For all of us. Are you listening? Now, this, the situation here is you, whoever, see that's where the, the key is, whosoever believe on him and his finished work will not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever. So in other words, in other words, it's just not automatic. He died. He came for everybody. Yes. All right. But whosoever believe on him will not die but have, have everlasting life. Priscilla, God bless you. Are you listening? And so you, 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 want, to, you want to understand this and um, come to that place of enjoying your liberty in this better covenant. Why? Because Jesus has done it. Jesus has shed his blood. Beloved, if not, listen, remember, if you, had, if you sin, that's another thing. In that old dispensation, a blood must be sacrificed for the remission of your sins. Are you listening? And so Jesus did that for you and I once for all, and that's it. Barbara, God bless you. Are you listening? So it's, it's very important for you and I to understand this. Now, in this dispensation, okay, in this, this covenant, you must accept what Jesus has done for you. He didn't do it for himself. Jesus didn't do that for himself. He did that for you and I. And so we must accept it. We must receive it. Believe it and receive it. And then begin to, you know, uh, allow, I mean, let the Holy Spirit, okay, of him, the spirit that he promised to send to us, which he is with us here. Okay, now, now God bless you. The spirit that he promised, who is now with us, okay, he is the one who is now taking over the things that you can do and allow him to do it in your life. Are you listening to me? So this is very, very important for you to understand. Beloved, our, our inability to understand gives the devil the upper hand to use what is ours against us. Because whatever you don't know that, 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 that um, is yours can be used against you. And, and this is what I believe that enemy uses against us, our ignorance. He doesn't have anything. He didn't create anything. He's not a creator. He, he uses what you and I has, is giving to us that we don't know we have. And he takes advantage over us. Paul said the other day, he says, now we are not ignorant. We don't have to be ignorant about what, what God has done for us. We don't have to be ignorant, beloved. He says, now we are not ignorant about the devices of the devil, lest he takes advantage. So if we, if we become ignorant about the promises God has given to us, okay, then the enemy takes advantage. Okay, then he takes advantage. But we don't have to be ignorant about the devices of the devil, unless he takes advantage. Now, in order not for us to be ignorant, we must understand the word of God. We must understand what God has, has done for us. So therefore now, therefore now for for. For, for what Jesus has done, we are no longer living in guilt and condemnation. The Bible scripture says that now therefore, now therefore, now therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For those who are in Christ. So 
you see why it's important for you to believe and, uh, and receive the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's so important. You have to believe that and receive it. Because, beloved, if you don't receive it, it's not yours. And it's not going to be forced on you. Salvation, your salvation, it's not a forced instrument or a forced weapon that somebody need to knock you on your head for you to be saved. No. No. Are you listening to me? And so it's very, very important. Now, if you have been saved and then understand that the fact that Jesus has done this for you, now, today I want to talk to you about sin. Because you are no longer, because why? I'm, talk, I'm talking about the fact that Jesus shared his blood concerning your sins. All right? Now, so your sins have been done with, has been forgiven. So the question is, to sin or not to sin, it's a choice. To sin or not to sin, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's your choice. And uh, I'm going to um, take you to some scripture. Let's look in some scriptures, all right? Very important for us to, to know what the scripture says, don't, so that it doesn't you know, look like I'm trying to give you some doctrine or some, some, some gospel. Go with me now to uh, Romans chapter 6. Okay, Romans chapter, chapter 6. Okay, the fact that Jesus has shed his blood for you and I, it doesn't also mean that we should continue in sin. So, therefore, therefore, since sin has no dominion over you and I, the choice to sin is ours. The choice to sin is ours. But watch this. Because somebody will ask that, oh, so if Jesus has done, has, has, has you know, uh, um, wash, his blood has washed away my sins, does that mean, does that, mean that, um, uh, <clears throat> You know, I, I, if I sin right now, it's okay. No, beloved, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's almost like uh, uh, scripture says that like a dog going back to its vomit. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. I mean, you see, when, when, when you allow the Holy Spirit to be walking in you and to be, you know, uh, working in you, you will come to the place, you yourself, you realize that, you know, Certain things that you, it was easy for you to do, you, 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 you wouldn't even want to do that anymore. Nobody will even tell you. And that is why you have to allow the Holy Spirit to keep working in you. Are you listening to me? Go, go with me to Romans 6, verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. Verse 1. Romans 6, verse 1. All right. Now watch this now. Ah, verse 1. What shall we then say? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. All right? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or maybe you don't know that you're dead, you are dead to sin. Well, if you have bought into the, the finished work of Jesus Christ concerning you, you have been dead to sin. Sin has no longer you know, any, any, any place in your life. That is why I said, I said to sin and not to sin is your choice. All right. We will see what I'm talking about as we read longer, uh, further. Look at verse three. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Are you getting the revelation here? Verse, th verse four. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. In the newness of life. We should also walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man our old self, our old man was, our old man was, um, let's see there, where was I? Our old man was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Did you see that? 
So the, the, I mean, the choice to sin or not to sin is yours. It's a choice. You can no longer say that the devil made you because you are not under the control of the devil if you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you are under his authority. Beloved, because whoever you submit to, you become a slave to that person. And so you see the word used here that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Yes, we were, because we were, we were slaves to sin before. We were slaves to sin. Are you listening to me? And so now we should have this understanding that we are no longer slaves to sin. For he who, verse 7, for he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died has been freed from sin. Now, Jesus took upon himself your sins and my sins, and he was crucified. He died. He died and buried that sin. Now he's, he's resurrected and, and, and uh, ascended to, to heaven, seated according to scripture, seated according, seated at the right hand of God, may still make an intercession for you and I. He's not of, he's, he doesn't have any sin. First of all, there was no sin in him. He became a sinner for you and me. Are you getting this? He became a sinner for you and me. So watch this now. Now, if we died, verse 7, verse 8, verse 8, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If we died with him, then we believe we will, will live with him also. Are you getting the revelation here? All right. We'll live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, died no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Death has no longer dominion over him. And if death has no longer dominion over him, beloved, certainly death has no longer have any dominion. And so you see that to sin and not to sin after your salvation is a choice. It's a choice. It's your choice. Because sin has no, no longer control over your life. No longer. Look at verse 10. For the death that he, Jesus, died. He died to sin once for all. Once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Alive, 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 alive to who? To God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Don't allow sin to be in your mortal body. Why? Because you are no longer a slave to it. You are no longer a slave to it. Okay? You are no longer a slave to sin. You are no longer a slave to sin. So, for you to, to sin or go back into it, that's a choice that you have to make. So, this way you can't also, you know, the, the, there's a... Uh, um, uh, uh, somebody said this the other day that, um, Pastor, when, when I believe Christians, you know, get to heaven, um, um, if Satan can find himself there, uh, he's, going to, he's going to say this to God, that God, your people accuse me of a lot of things I don't know nothing about. <laughs> yeah, because we are no longer under his control. Yeah, somebody says, well, Ephesians 4, chapter, um, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, uh, it tells you, you know, says that um, Satan is the, is, the, is the prince of the air. He's in charge of this earth. Yes, but Jesus says that we are in this world, but we are not of it. Whoever you submit to, you become a slave to that person. Whoever you submit to. Who are you submitting to? Who are you submitting to? And so, so get understanding of this word. 
get understanding and stop giving all this accolades you know to to satan and his demons if, i mean unless you are going through a little challenge time in your life it has to do with satan and some demons beloved you are not under their control are you listening you are not under their control i mean go back to that old dispensary or the old testament what did somebody like job did some people say that oh um, job said that what he feared most, most came upon him no listen the god has his plan concerning your life which he says that the plans he has for you they are plans of good and not evil to bring you to the expected end there's an expectation of what god created you for that he's expecting you to fulfill that and you will fulfill that all right he says it's it's a plan of good not evil it's a good plan the plan god has for you it's a plan of good and not evil so stop you know subjecting yourself under that lordship or or the kingship or whatever ship of satan he is not your god he is not you want you is you are not under his dominion unless unless you have not received and understand and believe and receive the finished work of jesus christ for which you have now come into this better covenant and begin to allow the i mean let the holy spirit continue to do his work in you without that understanding beloved you would think that you are under the control of satan and his demons but you are not are you listening okay so look at verse 12, 12 again therefore do not let sin reign in your mem in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lot you don't need to obey it verse 13 and do not present your members as instrument of unrighteousness to sin but present yourselves to God as being alive from dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God watch this now you see that you if you if you look at verse 9 of of chapter 6 romans chapter 6 verse 9 look at this now knowing that christ having been raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has dominion over him now that is jesus now look at you verse 14 for sin shall have no have dominion let me read that again i'm so excited for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace under the new dispensation so sin has no dominion sin has no dominion over you anymore man i, I i'm telling you you need to get this that the, the choice to sin or not to sin is your choice. To sin or not to sin, it's your choice. It has nothing to do with the devil. Because, beloved, if the, de oh, if the devil can let you, okay, just, just think evil of somebody, then the devil can let you do anything else in your life that is happening in your life. How's that? Because then you are under, under his, his command. His, his dominion all right but you are not under his dominion you are not under his his authority are you getting the revelation here this is the importance of who you are in christ it is so paramount in your life that you should get this and not live your life according to you know your effort in trying to to do right and and you miss it you know somehow you start condemning yourself and you you think that well god is 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 punishing you i mean that's another thing god is punishing you for what you are going through now god is punishing you listen god is not punishing you okay god is not punishing you If Jesus has done this for you, well, God knows his position. 
God knows his position. God knows his position where the covenant he made with man is concerned. So God is not punishing you for, for, for missing it yesterday. Or, or, you know, I mean, some, some people are, are, are living their life in guilt and condemnation and, and believing that some demon in, 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 in Listen, where, where do demons come from? They are, they, are, they are spirits and agents of the devil. And if you are not under the control and of an authority of the devil, how does he have his demons working for you or working against you? Come on now. You want to tell me that he demons and, and Satan himself have more power than the God whom you have subjected yourself to? Is that what you are telling me? Think again. Just think about that. Is my God stronger than Satan and his demons? Or Satan and his demons are stronger than the God that I have accepted into my life. I have made, I have, I, I have made him my Lord and Savior. Ask yourself that question. Stop living in fear. Beloved, what, what you are going through, listen. Everybody have issues. Oh, yes. Everybody. Look for, you know, most of the time you think that people who are probably, in your opinion, are rich financially, don't have issues. Go and ask them. They will tell you. They will tell you what you don't even, you, you will not be, believe. Go and, go and ask them. Go and ask them. Everybody have issues. Beloved, and there is, there is, there is dry times in the life of everybody on this face of this earth. That's, that's dry times. There are times where, because this, it's life. It's life. Whilst there's, there's, there's night time, there's also a day time. There's afternoon, there's morning. All right? These things, are, these things are part of this world which you live in. And so if you are going through anything right now that doesn't look like what you want to see and all that, please don't, don't, don't conclude that, you know, God is punishing you for some sins you committed yesterday. And, 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 and for that reason, uh, you know, you have to, you have to try to everything to, to, to please God and, and, and not beloved, you are making the shed blood of Jesus useless. You are making the shed blood of Jesus concerning you. Because remember, if you think that God is punishing you, then, then, then share your blood for the remission of your sins. Then share your blood. So we need, you need to get this. All right? I'm, I'm inspiring somebody. You need to get this and stop living in fear, guilt, and condemnation. And Because, you see, if you cannot condemn your own self. You will not have the, the, the tool to be condemning somebody. Stop condemning yourself. So that you won't even, even have the, 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 the time to be condemning anybody. Stop condemning yourself. God is not punishing you. Are you do you know what it means? Do you, I mean, some, some time ago, somebody says he believed that God, God is becoming old. Because looking at... Um, the kind of um, punishment he used to give or the way he dealt with people, you know, when, I mean, I mean, serious. Go, go to that old dispensation and see the way he used to deal with people. And you think, God, when, when, did, when did God open the earth and, and let the earth swallow you up because of you, one sin you committed? Are you serious? God is not punishing you. Don't, don't buy this, 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 this lies of the devil that God is punishing you for what you are going through. Or, or demons have control over you. Some demons from your family and, and uh, you know, and, and, and uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. First John chapter, th chapter 3. First John. All right. I got to show you some scriptures. First John chapter 3. Go with me now. First John. Let's look at chapter 3. Oh, glory be to God. Watch chapter 3, verse 9. Verse 9. Now, whoever, 
Whoever has been born of God does not sin. <laughs> Did I say that? Scripture said that. Whoever, okay, whoever has been born of God. Are you born again? Have you given your life to Jesus? If you are born, but if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. If any man be in Christ. So see, this is what I keep saying. Unless you are not in Christ. Unless you are not in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creature or creation. <laughs> Bible says that the old man, the old things has passed away. Behold, everything is become new. You are new in this better dispensation, better covenant. Watch this. Verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his, his seed remains in him. His, Jesus, the seed of the seed, which is Jesus, remains in you. The seed of Jesus, Jesus remains in you. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. And whoever has been born of God does not sin. That's what the scripture says. That's what the scripture says. Whoever is born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. If you are, if you are born of God... If you are born of God, why are you thinking that, you know, you, you missed it yesterday, so you are such a bad sinner, and, and, and you are so condemned, and what you are going through now, God is punishing you. Hey, my goodness, listen, where, who is teaching you this? For you to, to, to leave, see, the enemy, your enemy wants you to think like that, so that you don't fulfill your life to the capacity. You don't live your life to the fullness in Christ. Are you listening? It is not so. Look at chapter 5 of 1 John. Still in 1 John. Let me show you some. I'm going to give you some scriptures so that uh, you, you know that I'm not, I'm not trying to just tell you things out of my head. It's what I have come to realize and believe in and it's exciting. I'm telling you. Listen. Even if you don't have all that you, you know, you want to have, I'm telling you, you have peace. You have peace. Because, beloved, I don't know if you have been in the place where, you, you, you know, it's like you need peace so much. Peace. You need rest. Oh, you have no idea what it means to have peace. You have peace. Irrespective of what you may not have right now. It's not over yet. Allow the Holy Spirit to just keep working. You have your peace. Are you listening? All right. First, first John chapter five. First John chapter five. All right. Look at look at something here. We we know that whoever is born of God, verse eighteen, verse eighteen. We know that whoever is born of God, whoever is born of God, does not sin. Helmut, God bless you. Long time. Whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Does not touch him. The wicked one does not touch him. Hallelujah. If you are born of God, the wicked one does not touch you. He doesn't have no permission. He does not have no permission to touch you unless God allows him. So, beloved, nothing can touch you without God's permission. Are you listening to what I just said? Nothing can touch you without God's permission. Nothing. If you are of God, if you are born of God, if you are born again, receive Jesus and the finished work of him or nail it on the cross concerning you, Receive him, receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit working in you, beloved. He can't touch you. He cannot. Mm -mm. I, I didn't say it. Look at that. 
We know that, verse 8, verse 19, we know that we are of God. If you're born of God, then you know that you're of God. And the wicked one, the wicked, does not touch you. Watch this. We know that also, we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. <laughs> That's what he does. That's what he does. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked ones. So if you don't know who you are in Christ, well, this is where the scripture says, even the elect can be swayed. Even the elect, you. If you don't know, if you don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are in Christ. Because, because when you are going through some person issues of life huh put some passing issues of life if you are not careful because of not knowing who you are you will you will you will you will welcome that passing issue to let let it stay and think then that it is the you know some demons who have been assigned against you and therefore that is exactly where he wants you to be and, uh, and as long as you welcome them and, and be hosting them, well, with that belief, they will stay. They will stay. You even attract them to come to stay. But beloved, God has, is not punishing you for whatever you are going through. And also for you to understand. See, this is why I said to sin or not to sin, it's a choice. Because you are no longer under the control of sin. Sin does not have any dominion over you, the Bible says. Are you listening? Sin has no dominion over you anymore. And this is what is so important. It's very important for you to understand that sin has no dominion over you. Sin don't have no dominion over you. Okay? Sin doesn't have any dominion over you this is exciting ah uh, glory be to god now watch this now watch this now look at look at um colossians chapter one go with me to colossians colossians chapter one what what time do i have is my time up yet <laughs> Woo! glory be to god look at colossians colossians chapter one <clears throat> i want to show you something here very 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 beautiful I'm telling you, beloved, you are not, you are not, and you don't have to believe the lies of the devil, all right? And I'm talking to you, the believer, you, the believer. And so if you have not given your life to Jesus to make him your Lord and Savior, beloved, you have to do that. It's so important that you do that so that you come out of the hand of the enemy, all right? Colossians chapter 1, all right? Are you there? <clears throat> all right, let's look at verse 20. Um, Colossians chapter 1. Let's look at verse, verse 20. Let's look at from verse, verse 21. Colossians 1, verse 21. You know what? Take one step back, verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should, should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Having made peace. Having made peace. Having made peace through the blood. Through the blood. Having made peace. God has made peace through the blood. All right, with you. Through the blood of who? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Not through your blood, but the blood of Jesus. He has made peace with you. Therefore, therefore, watch this now. He has made peace with you. He has made peace with you. He has made peace with you through the blood of his cross. And you, say me. Just say me. <laughs> Verse 21, and you who once were alienated 
and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now he has reconciled you. Are you see? Are you getting this? Huh? You who once were <laughs> I love this alienated or alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now he has reconciled. God has reconciled. Why? Through the blood. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Beloved, why wouldn't you want to receive him? Why don't you want to receive him? He has made peace with you. Giving you peace. Through the shed blood of, of his, beloved, be, his only beloved son. Jesus, why don't you want to make peace? He has reconciled you. Beloved, you see that we have been reconnected back to God. You want to talk about, you know, you, you are a, sin, a sinner and on the face of this earth and your sins and the sins of your, and somebody's sins has you are paying for somebody's sins and 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 who said you you pay for somebody's sins i mean have you paid for your own sins much more think that what you are going through you are paying for the sins of somebody who told you that and where did you get that from where did you get that from paying the sins of somebody you haven't paid for your own sin because you couldn't pay for your own sins so Jesus has to pay for your sins. And if Jesus has paid for your sins, why are you thinking that you are paying what you are going through is as a result of, of uh, some family curse and that you are paying for, you know, you are going through that same old curse and what have you. Beloved, no. Jesus took upon himself your curse of disobedience. To the law for which if you could not even keep one you have broken all Jesus took that curse Jesus took that curse are you listening Jesus took that curse upon himself so what makes you think that you are you are under a curse okay of um, uh, and that is in, in your family. Now, can I ask you a question? Can you look into your family and see if there's any blessings there also and take that one as well? Because if you don't believe that Jesus took upon himself the curse of disobedience, that was to be upon you. He took it upon himself. But you rather believe that there's some curse of your family and what you are going through is as a result of a curse, then beloved, could you also find out if there's any blessing and pick up that blessing and run with it? Because see, in that old dispensation, there was a blessing attached to the curse. If you obey all, blessings of God comes upon you if you disobey curses came upon you and so if you were so concerned about about curse then please be a little bit concerned about blessing also am I talking to I know I'm talking to somebody I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but I know I'm talking to somebody if you believe if this is what you believe then please Believe also that there is, there is, there is a curse. There is a blessing as well. Are you listening? Okay, so now I, want you, I, I just wanted to bring that to you because this is very important for you to understand that. Now, okay, now look at verse um, 22. All right. 
in the body of his flesh. Now, I think because I, I interjected this thing here, it, it doesn't flow with the reading. So let me go back and read it all to, to you, okay? All right, from verse, verse 21. And you who once were aliens and enemies in your minds by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled you in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable in his sight. I mean, I mean, God is not blaming you. God is not punishing you. God is not chastising you. Beloved, look at it for yourself. Look at it for yourself. I'm talking to somebody. Whatever you are going through, it's not as a result of God punishing you. And God has allowed some demons, you know, to be tormenting you and all that, that stuff that, you know, somebody's teaching you or preaching to you and all that. Beloved, get away from that kind of doctrines and preachings and teachings. That is not of God. Look at the scripture here. And you, who once were, in other words, now that you have become born again, now that you've come into Mercy, Sister Mercy, praise the Lord. <laughs> I hope you are doing well in India. Watch this now. You, 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 say me, say me, you. Who once, and uh, this is um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. You who once were aliens and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now, he has reconciled you, bring you together with God in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable in his sight. Blameless, holy and irreproachable. So who is reproaching you? Who then is reproaching you? In the sight of God. First of all, God is not condemning you. God is not you know, punishing you. So then, who then are you believing is doing this? Who are you believing? Watch verse 23. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not you are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard which was preached to every creature under heaven for which paul he speaking to us became a minister if you don't move away from the gospel if you stay with this with this word beloved stay with it stay with the promises of god you are definitely, you are definitely going to have your day. Stay with it. Stay with it. Don't move. Don't. Stick to the word. Stick to it. See, it's very important for you to get this understanding and not be moved. You see what the scripture says? If indeed you continue in the faith... Not in doubt. That's because, you know, build time is approaching and you begin to doubt and fear is coming in and begin because, beloved, I'm telling you, trust him. You have a testimony to, to give. The testimony of the fact that this is not the first time you are going through what you are going through. Or this is not the first time you are passing through something. You've passed here before. And God is able to do that for you. If you indeed continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which was preached to every creature, to you under heaven. If you don't move, 
if you don't move. Now, let me give you a scripture here to just make sense of what I'm saying to you. All right, go with me to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9. I'm bringing this home, so just stick with me for a minute. I'm bringing this home. Hebrews chapter 9. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 9. Let me show you some. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are not afraid. We are not dismayed. We cannot be destroyed. Hebrews chapter 9. Look at Hebrews chapter 9. Look at Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 28. Look at something here. Very powerful. So Christ was offered. Christ was offered to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Did you get this revelation? Did you get this? Christopher, God bless you. Did you get this? Christ was offered once, beloved, one time to bear the sins, your sins. And to, for those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. So his second coming is for those who are saved. Are you listening to me? So again, if you have not given your life to Jesus, you must do that now, quickly. Scripture says that he will, he will come like a thief in the night. Nobody knows when he's coming. If you have not given your life to him, do that now. If you have also given your life to him and receive his finished work concerning you and uh, receive the Holy Spirit in your life, then be steadfast. The scripture says, we just read that. Be steadfast. If you have not given your life to him, do that now. Now. Because he can show up anytime. Because look at this. When he comes the second time, let me read that to you again. Hebrews 9, 28. Look at that. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those to those now watch this now you see the you see the the difference here he bear the sins of many everybody but to those who eagerly wait for him he will appear he will come again a second time okay apart from sin for salvation so when God, when Jesus come the second time, beloved, he's not coming to die for your sins again. He's dead, shed his blood for your sins. Now, you have to believe and receive that which he did for you and become part of the family that he is coming for out of this world. Are you getting this? So don't say, well, G G Jesus died for all of us. Yeah, he died for all of you. But to them that believe, to them that receive him, they were given the right to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Are you getting this revelation? So, yes, Jesus died for Muslims. He died for uh, uh, he, uh, the heathens. He, died. he shed his, his blood for everybody. Glory be to God. But you need to understand that because he shed the blood for you, you don't have to live your life as in the old dispensation or the old covenant. So come in here and receive that. Now, when you come to understand this, then receive him and the finished work on the cross concerning you, then, then accept his Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit now to work in you. Somehow, some way, in this lifetime, you will go through some challenging times. Why do I say that? Because there are some 
there is there is uh, there's night there is day there is afternoon it's a season it changes and it comes with its own package are you listening but be steadfast look at what we just saw in colossians chapter one all right in colossians chapter one all right hey uh, uh, prophet sam god bless you look at chapter one of colossians read from verse 21 to 23 be steadfast in the faith why because jesus coming again not for sins but for salvation for those who are saved and so if you have not given your life to jesus do that now well pastor how do i do that this is what you have to do i'm leading you right now to prayer okay for your salvation pray this prayer with me say lord jesus i've heard the word that i didn't know that i have to re accept what you did and receive it now i i see myself as a sinner whom you died and shed your blood for now i receive i believe and i receive what you did for me and i receive you now as my lord and savior come into my life take control of my life you are my 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 god and my lord and now baptize me in the holy spirit let the holy spirit take control now and lead me and teach me in all the things that i need to do and live in a fulfilled life i thank you jesus in your name i pray amen beloved if you pray that prayer right now and um, um god bless you and then you don't have a place of worship okay because it's very important that uh it's not about church but it's also important that you don't exempt yourself from the gathering of the saints it's important because iron sharp net iron it will help you to grow and mature more so if you don't find if you don't have a church find a bible believing teaching church okay and um introduce yourself be part of it all right let the pastor or the leadership know that you have received jesus as your lord and savior and uh, you are born again now and you want to grow they will help you to increase are you listening to me now i want you to join me stay with me every morning okay monday through friday depending on how the, the week goes and all that weekends may be part of it but definitely monday through friday same time 10 o'clock eastern standard time all right join me and uh, even as i bring you a word to increase your faith all right now i believe your faith is being increased your faith is being increased you you know that it's no longer sin that is controlling you but it's your choice it's your choice and you don't have to you know be a slave to it anymore be slave to jesus hallelujah isn't that exciting to be a slave to jesus let 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 the holy spirit takes over and do and just use you some more it's so exciting i'm telling you so exciting please sh do me a favor share this broadcast share this broadcast all right to everyone share this to everyone share this to everyone and um, let them uh, get this 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 message it, it will bless them as well because we need to know that one we we have to accept the finished work of jesus all right surrender our life to him receive the holy spirit and live this better under this better covenant and not to live our life as is in the as in the old covenant for which we couldn't you know uh, so that you don't walk around you know in guilt and condemnation thinking that god is is punishing you or some demons are you know in control of your life no you are not you are no longer under that um that that um, that uh, you are not no longer a slave to sin for which demons have have to take control over your life you are not and so be blessed i'll listen 
Oh my goodness, Alison, God bless you. I'm getting ready to leave and now. So I'll get the message or I go back to the Facebook and share, share it as well. Get a message. Please listen to it and share it. God bless you. Same time tomorrow. Same time tomorrow. Um, I'll be with you. Until then, I want you to know. But listen, go, you know, go to my, my website, www.patrickquenu ministry, and um, you know, be a blessing to this ministry, even as we want to just get some equipment to help us increase, all right, increase um, our scope of the broadcast. All right, there's a button there that says donate. Be a, be a blessing so that we can expand it. All right, be a blessing. And then also um, um, stay, stick, you know, to the, YouTube, uh, to the YouTube, get more messages to bless you from the YouTube as well. Same time tomorrow, want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all that getting, get understanding. God bless you.